Art Kicks, welcome to the Curious Curator. I'm so excited about today's episode because I finally get to show you some of my own work. For the past year, I've been working as a curatorial intern at the Schalbs Museum of Contemporary Art here in Porto. And today I'm going to talk about the exhibition that I was working on, which was Monir Charoudi Farman Farmayan, Infinite Possibility, Mirror Works and Drawings 1974-2014. The first museum survey of geometric mirror works and drawings by Iranian artist Monir Shahudi Farman Farmayan. This exhibition is still on view at Sahalvus and next year it will travel to the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York. Monir's work can't be separated from her life, so as part of the exhibition, Sraps premiered a documentary about Monir, directed by Bachman Kiarostami, which is in projection at the museum's foyer. Monir was born in Iran in 1924, and early on in her life she decided she wanted to be an artist. She wanted to go to Paris to study, but she couldn't because of World War II, so instead she traveled to the United States and settled in New York. During the years that she lived there, she graduated graduated from Parsons, started working as a fashion illustrator, and became immersed in the city's vibrant art scene, meeting, among others, Andy Warhol, Jackson Pollock, and Louise Nevelson. She returned to Iran in 1957 and began to rediscover her country's art and culture. During her travels, she started collecting coffeehouse paintings, tribal jewelry, and reverse glass paintings, a traditional technique that she incorporated into her own artworks. In 1950, in 1956, Monir visited the city of Shiraz with artists Marcia Hafif and Robert Morris. She was deeply influenced by her experience at the Shasharag Shrine, covered from floor to ceiling with brilliant shards of mirror that reflected light and movement. She returned home, met a master mirror craftsman, and initiated a collaboration that lasted for decades. In 1979, after the Islamic Revolution, Monir and her family found themselves stranded in New York and unable to return home. Without access to her studio and the materials necessary to create mirror works, Monir began drawing and creating smaller, more intimate pieces with autobiographical references. She did a few commissions, including a stained glass window for an office building in New York. A few years later, after her husband died, she returned to Iran to find out that all of their belongings, including their house and her own artwork, works had been confiscated by the government. In 2004, she moved back to Iran permanently and started making mirror works again. Thus began her most intense period of artistic production, which continues to this day. Monir is increasingly recognized as one of the most important Iranian artists of her generation. Her unique body of work combines an appropriation of traditional Iranian techniques, such as reverse glass painting and and mirror mosaic, as well as the incorporation of Islamic geometrical principles, with an abstract, modern sensibility. Like many other artists, she has only received proper recognition for her work late in her life. But in the past decades, she has had major exhibitions all over the world. This exhibition at Sraubes presents three main rooms. The first room has many works which have not been exhibited since the 70s, including large-scale sculptures and plaster works with mirrors. These are some of the most striking works in the exhibition, and they really have to be seen in person to be truly appreciated. The mirror balls you see here are part of a larger collection, most of which has since been lost. One of these mirror balls belonged to Andy Warhol, who exchanged works with Monir when he went to Tehran to photograph Queen Farah. In return, he gave her a Marilyn print, which was later confiscated. The drawings offer a deeper look into the geometrical studies, as well as being prime examples of the work Monir did during the years of exile in the US. The second room is installed in a way that brings to mind Munir's experience in Shah Sharakh. The larger scale works are part of what she calls families. Their geometric abstraction is achieved through concepts of repetition and progression, inspired by the mystical significance of numbers in Sufi geometry, as well as aesthetic traditions of Islamic architecture, which is most visible in the work titled Murkanas. Notice how the light is reflected and scattered by the mirrors, making the works project themselves into the architecture and the visitors. 
Each of the pieces in the family is built around a number. Monir has said that her favorite shape is the hexagon, which is visible in a lot of her works, such as the work on paper we can glimpse inside the third room. This room is dedicated to the more recent works on paper, which show the sophistication of Monir's work, not only when it comes to geometry, but also color and materials. The final piece in the exhibition is a couple of etched glass doors Monir created in the 1980s for her New York house. The decision to light it this way was by Suzanne Cotter, the chief curator of this exhibition. And I can tell you that when Monir saw it, she gasped. Monir was present for interviews and for the exhibition's opening, as well as for a conversation with artist and friend Frank Stella, curator Hans Ulrich Obrist, and Susan Cotter herself. So there you have it. I hope you like this exhibition. I'm incredibly proud of it. If you have a chance to see it either here in Porto or in New York, be sure to go and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time with more exhibitions. Bye!